And we welcome you to Biblical Strategies Today, featuring pastor, teacher, and author Phil Moser. I'm Scott Foreman. Phil, thanks for taking the time to share with us some Biblical Strategies today. Thank you, Scott. Good to be with you. Well, Phil, there's probably no topic that affects the most people and yet is largely ignored as the topic of sexual temptation. So this week we're going to talk about sexual temptation, and I think it's important for us, Phil, to keep this largely personal, meaning this is something, whether we're willing to admit it or not, that we all struggle with. But Phil, if sexual desire is something that God has given to us, What's wrong with simply acting on those impulses? Well, that's a great question. I think um, one of the things that's important to understand, Scott, is what's wrong with simply acting on the impulses is that we were creatures that were made in the image of God, not simply biological specimens that act on impulses. So because we were made in the image of God, that means we have the ability to make uh, moral choices, things that are right and things that are wrong. I also think it's important that we understand the word desire or the word lust as it's used in the Bible. Um, So the word, for instance, is used in in Matthew chapter 5, verse 28, when we read, but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent, or that's the Greek word epithemia, or desire, has already committed adultery with her in her heart. The word epithemia can be used to describe both a positive and negative element, and it always depends not on the word, but on the context and the object of the word. So it's used over in 1 Timothy 3, for instance, to say the man who desires the position of an overseer desires a good thing, but here it's used to say the man who desires a woman who is not his wife desires a bad thing. So I think the way I always like to describe it to individuals, and hopefully it makes sense, is this way. Um, For a man to desire quality time with his wife, is that a good thing? Sure. Yeah. For a man to desire quality time with another man's wife, is that a good thing? No. And see the difference? I've given you the same sentence. The only thing I did was change the object of the desire. God has allowed for sex within the confines of a marriage between uh, a man and a woman, um, singly devoted to one another in marriage, to be a very good thing. But there's parameters on that particular relationship outside of that. Now, I'm going to try to jam 300 years of history into about 60 seconds. Okay, here we because go. I th- okay, because I think what happens is people tend to real they don't realize how influenced their thinking has been by hundreds of years of culture. So in the 18th century, there was a man by the name, a German theologian by the name of Friedrich Schleiermacher. And Friedrich Schleiermacher is known for the fact that he said man didn't have to be subject to the scriptures because he questioned the authenticity of the scriptures. So he begins to question whether the scriptures are genuinely from God. And when he does that, his application is, you're not subject to them. Okay. Now fast forward the tape about 100 years or so, and along comes a guy by the name of Charles Darwin. Darwin said man isn't created in the image of God, because why? Because man evolved. So just think about this. You're not subject to the Word of God, 19th century, 18th century thinking. Now you're not subject to God because you're not made in His image. You simply evolved. Uh, that's, 20th, that's 19th century thinking under Charles Darwin. And then one more name I'd like to add to that list is a guy by the name of Sigmund Freud. And Freud said, listen, if you're not subject to the scriptures, like Schleiermacher said, and you're not made in the image of God, like Darwin said, then there is nothing left to your identity but your desires. There's nothing else. So your identity is determined by your desires. If you sexually desire to do something, then feel free to go ahead and do it. And so I think what happened is over those 300 years, you took away the scripture's authority You took away the idea that the image of God was what you had, and all you were left with was you make your choices, even your sexual choices, simply by your desires. And I think sometimes we forget that that's been a process in our culture for hundreds of years. We tend to think of it as a pretty current thing, but really it's been going on for hundreds of years. And therefore, the most important element we could have is to remember that we were creatures made in the image of God. Well, tragically for many people, this story is all too familiar. First, you were only curious, but now you're shackled by lust and desire. Too ashamed to ask for help, you struggle on in secrecy. You desperately need strength for the struggle, which is why Phil's book entitled Strength for the Struggle is so appropriate. Strength for the Struggle examines sexual temptation from the scriptures and offers help for standing against sexual temptation through the example of Jesus. Just go to biblicalstrategies.com and click store to order your Strength for the Struggle package today, which includes a book, 
study guide, and scripture retrieval system. Also, you'll find this on Amazon also, so you can search on there on Amazon. Or you can call us toll-free at 877-772-1992. That's 877-772-1992. 